Hello and welcome to the beautiful East Eddie Wah. I'm Pat, and today we're going to be shooting a ballistic panel. Let's go check this thing out. All right. Buddy David had a whole 4x8 sheet of this. And he cut me off a big piece of it, so everyone tell David thank you. What this is, is it is meant to be screwed in to your home or office and provide you with some bulletproof protection. So what I have done today is screwed that to 2x4s just as though it would be inside of your home or office. Of course, every good ballistic test, if you're going to test armor, you need a witness plate. So as my witness plate, we've got two 5-gallon buckets filled with water. So if anything actually makes it through, then we'll have a nice little interesting witness. So for the starting lineup is the SAR-9. I actually have a black talon and then just an FMJ. I'm curious if that isn't the first SAR-9 to fire a black talon just because of the generation difference. The next is my Remington R1 Enhanced. This thing's sporting a new set of lock grips. Those things are slick. That one will be shooting an FMJ. And the next is the best millimeter. Yes, you heard it. 10 millimeter Ruger Blackhawk. That one will be shooting a cast lead Buffalo bore. Smith & Wesson 686 4 inch. This is quite possibly one of my favorite pistols. It'll be firing a American Eagle 158 grain. Ruger old model Blackhawk still has not been converted. If the old model Blackhawk doesn't go through, my Rossi 92 will. And then, of course, I have the 500 Magnum. That's a bear loads. We got the HSM bear loads for the 44 as well. That's both of them. SAR 9 with the infamous Black Talon. Followed by an FMJ. Nine millimeter did not make it through. 45 ACP ball through the five inch 1911. Oh, 1911 stop in the front of it. Boy. Didn't make it through. Time for the best millimeter. That's 10 millimeter. All right, let's go look at that one. It's not visible like the 45 ACP. But did it go through? Ooh, seeing some discoloring. Uh-oh, wait a minute. We'll have to cut that one out with a knife. Oh, 10 millimeter went straight through. <laughs> That's why we have witness plates. That's cool. Well, let's not end this party. We're gonna go do some more. All right, time for the 357 Magnum. The trusty old Smith & Wesson 686. Whoo, doggy. There is the entrance. Did we make it through? No, 357 isn't as mean as 10 millimeter. All right, now a 10 millimeter hard cast lead went through. I'm very sure 44 Magnum hard cast lead's going through. Let's try this one. Oh yeah, we hit that one. But I see something interesting. Look right here. That one was saved by the handle. 
the bullet hit it there where is that bullet i'll look for it of course the rossies out here we know pistol will go through it so rifle is a no-brainer but i'm not going to bring her to the dance and not give her a twirl so here we go hsm 305 grain hard cast bear loads we got two fresh buckets of water <laughs> let's do this Sweet. So that was enough pressure to blow the lid off of it. <laughs> That's crazy. There's our entrance. The lid fractured. There's that entrance. And there is that exit. I wonder if we can find that bullet. There are the 44 holes. There's our 10 millimeter hole. Of course we stopped 9 millimeter and 357. But you know, I didn't know how many buckets it was gonna take. But I have four buckets, and I have a 500 Magnum. So it, let's do this. Now you guys have seen my 500 Magnum before. Liberty Bell Firearms hooked this thing up with a slick Cerakote finish. Go check those guys out. But here we've got a HSM 440 grain hard cast lead bear load. Man, <laughs> there's four buckets down there. <laughs> And I think it's time to get my camera wet. Here we go. Boom. Man, those kick. Mm. Swallow that case up. <laughs> Oh, we just glanced it. That's why we only hit one of them. So yeah, we just glanced that bucket. Let's try to get us a dead center shot. <laughs> Woo. I believe we watered the yard. Boy, we got it this time. Pushing the stuffing out of that. Looks like entry, exit. Entry, exit. Entry. Ah, exit. Deck gum. I wonder if I could find that bullet. So our regional shooting had knocked out one of the 45 ACPs. We still have another one right here. It's pretty neat that I actually stacked these right on top of each other. There's that one. Let's see if we can get this nine millimeter out of here. Boy, my knife is going to be so dull after this. And I just had to put both of the 9 millimeters on top of each other. That was literally out of the same hole. I halfway thought that I missed with one of the 9 millimeters. But you can't even tell which one is the black talon. I guess maybe this is because of the darker color. 
But yeah, I literally put both of the nine millimeters in the same hole, stacked both of the 45s on top of each other. <laughs> That's pretty cool. But for you techie guys, this isn't quite three eighths of an inch. Three eighths of an inch should have been level three. I looked this stuff up online and it was $533 for a sheet of it. So I guess if people aren't shooting with you, shooting at you with 10 millimeter and up, and probably staying away from the cast lead, you're probably all right. That's pretty cool. One shooting outing. I put two in the same place and two in the same place. <laughs> Special thanks to David Dickinson for donating the Kevlar panel today. Uh, we destroyed that thing, and I had an absolute blast. I hope you guys did too. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe, turn on the notifications, get ready for more videos. But anyway, I'm Pat. I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time.